So in the next five, in the next five minutes or so, um, we'll talk about newborn hypothermia and how that relates to newborn survival in research limited settings. And I think to understand that it's important for you to understand where newborns in the world are dying, why they are dying, what are the causes of mortality um, from a global picture. And I want you to help me to figure out what, we, what can we do about it. And to get you started, um, I'll let you sit. I don't uh, have you stand up, but uh, stretch out your arms hold your hands open like this and now close your eyes and think about what you can hold in these hands maybe an apple maybe a purse maybe your cell phone what about a life now open your eyes again so this infant that looks so peaceful and quiet is actually born too early is too small um, to be uh, is immature and too small, is actually struggling to survive. And that struggle takes place a lot in low and mid-income countries. In fact, of the three million babies that die annually globally, not 80%, not 90%, but 99% die in low or mid-income countries. And if you take a look at um, newborn, newborn death rates per 1,000 live births. You'll see that in the poorer countries of the Sub-Saharan and South Asian regions, the uh, mortality rates are 44 compared to industrialized countries where they are four. So they're 11 times higher in the low and mid-income countries than in industrialized countries. This graph shows the global causes of newborn death. And um, who can help me to figure out what are the big newborn killers? Just by taking a look at this graph. Complications, of pre Complications from preterm birth. So if a baby is born too small, he or she doesn't have the resources to just be alive, eat, and grow. That's what a baby is supposed to do in the first days and, and weeks of life. What else? infections. So um, pneumonia infections of the lungs or other uh, severe infections are one of the uh, major killers. They are often due to um, unclean birthing practices. The uh, blade that's used to cut the cord is not sterile. Um, the stump is open and is, is not uh, cleaned or stuff is put on, on, on the um, cord stump. So that leads to severe infections, and about a quarter of um, babies die of that. And what else? Complications during birth. During, during birth. And that's often, that's another easily preventable cause of death. Oftentimes when a baby is born, it's just not breathing enough. And in 80 to 90% of the cases, giving the baby a, a few breaths to help it um, take their own breath um, would be enough, and it simply doesn't happen. So these are the major killers, and you see that um, all of the. Why am I showing these mortality causes when I talk about newborn hypothermia? It doesn't even appear here as a as a cause of death, but it contributes to cause of death. So literally, if you catch a cold, if you're too cold, then a baby needs to mobilize more energy to um, keep the, to fight the infection than to, um, than to grow and maintain its vital functions. And the same is true for um, preterm babies. Preterm babies by um, preterm babies by default have less resources that they can mobilize. So um, neonatal hypothermia or a baby being too cold is both a direct and an indirect cause of death, and it's part a problem particularly in low birth weight or uh, premature babies. And it's simply defined as an abnormally low body temperature under, th under uh, uh, 37 degrees. Everything that's mildly below, between 36 and 36.5, 
is um, referred to as mild hypothermia or cold stress, which basically just means, just needs the baby to be wrapped up and, and protected a little bit. 32 to 60 to 36 degrees is moderate hypothermia, it needs a little bit more attention and care, and everything under 32 degrees is severe hypothermia, cold, also referred to as cold injury, and needs really um, intensive treatment. So as I said, it's the small babies, the ones that, that are born prematurely that are um, particularly prone to newborn hypothermia because they have an immature physiological um, system to regulate their temperature, both from a um, neurological and from a vascular standpoint. They have a relatively high surface area compared to their body, which leads to more uh, temperature being uh, lost through evaporation and other mechanisms. They have less fat and uh, are th thus um, less isolated against um, environmental cold. They cannot shiver. They don't have uh, that ability to generate heat by shivering yet. They have a specialized uh, brown fat tissue in the back that helps them generate um, energy, but that's also easily depleted. And they have less glycogen stores, which means they have less blood sugar that they can mobilize to, um, to respond to the cold. So you would, you would think, why is uh, hypothermia a, a problem in tropical countries or in, or in these um, low-income countries, Africa, South Asia? And if you look at the data, um, you'd be surprised that hypothermia is a problem even in the tropics. In Zambia, for example, it's anywhere between 48 and 71 percent. Also in other African countries, Ethiopia, 53 percent, Zimbabwe, over 50 percent, Uganda, depending on the study, between 29 and, and 70 percent. So even in warm, and the same is true in, for other regions, um, depending on the study and depending on, on the country, um, hypothermia is a global problem. It occurs everywhere, even in warmer regions. So what can you do? It's like many of the uh, mortality causes that I show you. It's a risk factor that is relatively easily preventable. The principle is uh, twofold, either um, creating a heat loss barrier by wrapping the baby in something or providing external heat through um, sources that are effective in reducing heat loss. And WHO recommends a whole um, ch chain of thermal protection similar to the cold chain for medicines. Here's the hot chain to keep the baby warm. It starts with heating the delivery room, if there's a room or at least uh, the delivery place. Immediately drying and wrapping the baby so that it doesn't lose um, heat by evaporation. And then where it's possible um, providing radiant warmers and water-filled mattresses. The gold standard are incubators in healthcare facilities. The problem with that is that in the countries that I showed you where uh, these, these children actually die from hypothermia, incubators are uh, simply not affordable. They cost, the, uh, the uh, modern standard one costs more than 20,000 and they're just not accessible in these kind of countries. An alternative, a very, let's say, a normal or biological alternative <coughs> is skin, providing skin to skin care or putting the naked baby on the mother's chest or somebody else's chest, which um, provides both warmth, um, encourages breastfeeding, and also um, facilitates bonding between the child and the mother or the caregiver. So that's an example of, of skin to skin care. It needs to be taught. It's, not, it's often not practiced. Sometimes uh, in some areas, people prefer to carry the kid on the back. So it's not, it's not universally practiced, let's say it like that. That's why um, people have been thinking about alternatives to um, higher cost technology. And one of these um, technologies, as I said, are infant warmer devices, incubators. They started about 100 years with um, contractions that um, were derived from chicken warmers. And now there are a whole bunch of um, solutions in development that try to construct the same or a similar infant warmer just a little bit um, easier. And one 
uh, innovation that's not, that now has actually attracted a lot of um, attention is the embrace device, which essentially looks like a sleeping bag. The, um, the trick about it is it has a warming element that you can heat. It's a wax-like um, material that keeps the temperature steady for about four hours and helps warm the, um, the sleeping bag and it helps keeping the kid warm. And it costs a fraction of a $20,000 uh, incubator. So um, what you have just learned or what you may, maybe already knew, most newborns, 99% of all newborns in the world die in low and mid-income countries. Asphyxia or a baby not breathing, prematurity, and infections are the major newborn killers. Neonatal hypothermia is an important risk factor, which oftentimes is not appropriately addressed. And thermal care, including skin-to-skin -skin care, and low-cost devices can prevent and treat hypothermia relatively easily. Thank you.